selection the basic purpose of selection is to separate different qualities of jute from raw jute bales according to the product quality to achieve optimum benefits with respect to a availability of jute fiber of required grade b ensuring the productivity c quality of the targeted product and d cost of the raw material for the targeted product let us have some basic information about the jute fiber at the beginning jute is a natural cellulosic fiber being obtained from the stem of the jute plant and hence falls under the category of bast fibers two varieties of jute fibers are available commercially from the farmers tosa and white the color of tosa varies from pale yellow to dark brown while that of white from pale yellow to yellow presently out of the total jute production tosa jute share is about 90% while the share of white jute is only 10% under the tosa variety daisy fibers are also being considered tosa jute is stronger than white jute and hence being mostly used in jute mill processing but white jute is finer than tosa jute and hence should be used for manufacturing finer jute yarns and fabrics white jute has higher root content as compared to tosa jute the jute plant is grown in west bengal assam north bihar south east odisha tripura and eastern up on 0.86 million hectares and the average production of dry fiber is about 10 million bales of 180 kg each some other allied fibers like mesta bimli and kenaf are also used in combination with jute in mill processing raw jute in its journey from field to mill may pass through four different market places one village two primary market or hat three secondary market or mokam four terminal market out of the above the up country markets constitute of number 1 to 3 while the terminal market is the kolkata raw jute market raw jute bundles are packed in bale form when such bales tied with ropes and weigh 130 to 150 kg they are called kachcha bales and when they are hydraulically pressed and weigh 180 kg they are called pakka bales A truck loaded with jute bales from the supplier is arriving in the jute mill. The loaded truck is placed on the way bridge. And the total weight is taken. After unloading the bales the empty truck is weighed again if the chalan 
for this consignment shows a different weight value then this mismatch is settled between buyer and supplier two bales from the supplied consignment are taken for inspection of the quality of jute supply and its moisture a process called claim inspection each bale carries a bale ticket with the mention of the year mokam's name supplier's name and quality grade of that bale We are observing a process of inspection by a senior mill officer to assess by hand and eye method the quality of jute supply and also its moisture using a moisture meter since it is common to receive bales containing some lower grade jute it is necessary for that officer to determine the percentage of such lower quality jute in the whole lot of jute bales supplied after inspection of both quality and moisture the price for the consignment is settled between buyer and seller here we are observing the unloading of jute bales from the truck and the manual stacking of the bales in jute mill godam in some mills such stacking is being carried out with the help of fork lifter Here also the moisture in the fiber is determined using a moisture meter. Let us now understand the jute grading scheme as per the specification IS 271 of 1975 formulated by Bureau of Indian Standards. Under this grading scheme the fiber characters considered are A strength B freedom from defects C root content d color e fineness f bulk density with maximum weightage to the fiber strength and root content these characters are generally responsible for processability yarn quality and production cost however there is a stipulation of minimum read length based on the above six attributes tosa and daisy jute are classified into eight grades td1 td2 up to td8 and similarly white jute grades are w1 w2 up to w8 jute fiber in a mill is identified by its regions of origin and grades namely assam marked as a in the mill northern marked as n semi northern marked as sn
साउथ बेंगाल मार्क एज एस बी बांग्लादेशी Let us now see some major defects as found in raw jute due to mainly defective rating. Specs: small barky spot in the body. Croppy, jute reeds top end is rough and hard. Dazed, weak fiber and dull in appearance. Runner, hard barky region running from lower end to middle portion. Hunka hard barky fiber found throughout the reed length loose leaf some leaves remaining attached to surface of fibers Let us now understand the process of selection. The objectives of selection are a segregation of inferior, moderate and higher quality of fibers from graded bells. b preparation of suitable fiber bundle size called mora from bigger bundles in bells. c to maintain uniformity in mora weight for regular or uniform feeding at spreader or card as the case may be d to identify the cost effective batch for best possible input output ratio we are observing at the selection stage that each bundle is taken out from the bail and the dry root is cut out by a chopper then hackled and then given for selection now we are observing the operations of the root cutter opening of the bales by cutting ropes keeping the bale tickets and ropes and habijabi near the bale taking out bundles from the bale identifying the root portion and chopping of the root then hackle Now we are observing the operations of the selector spreading of the root end of the mora on the floor segregation of higher and lower grades of jute and keeping the jute bundles with major defects separately making up a mora of appropriate weight of 1 to 1.5 kg that is 1.25 kg on an average and place neatly on the pallet with a half twist with middle of the mora bell mixing can be done during selection here normally moras 
from two different grades of jute bells are put alternatively on the pallet. After the selection is over, the pallet is taken to the batching section by manually or forklift. Let us now note the different batch mix usually followed in the jute mills. Sacking warp batch, Hessian warp batch, Hessian waved batch, Sacking waved batch, Export yarn batch, etc. In the batching section, the rigid raw jute fibers are softened. The softening of jute fiber is conducted through either spreader machine or softener machine. The objectives of using a spreader machine are A. Teasing of long jute reed. B. Cleaning of impurities. C. Opening of fiber. D. Uniform application of oil in water emulsion. E. Formation of a continuous assembly of jute fiber mass of more or less uniform mass per unit length. F. Formation of pneumatically controlled fiber roll of 100 to 120 kg suitable for feeding to the breaker car. Let us now understand the working of a spreader machine. The spreader machine has three sections. A. Feed table and feed rollers. B. Slow chain with lantern rollers and fast chain moving eight times faster than slow chain. C. Delivery section with emulsion spraying and roll former with pneumatic pressure. Sometimes a yarn binder is given prior to the delivery of jute fiber mass for better performance at the feed of breaker car. One or two side or leader rolls are also fed along with the main feed for better formation of selvage during roll formation at the delivery. This helps better feeding of rolls at the feed of breaker car. Let us now see the operation of a spreader machine. The moras are taken off from the pallet and fed one after another on the feed seat. The feeding is carried out in synchronization with a blinking of light being operated by a timer. 10 to 12 morers are fed per minute. It may be mentioned that the lighter morers should be fed at quicker interval than the heavier morers. The morers are fed with root end first on which the next mora is overlapped, covering the crop end. After feeding, the moras pass through the fluted feed rollers. Then the jute reeds are passed 
through the rugged pins of slow chains and held within the pins by the actions of lantern rollers. Then the jute reeds are drawn by the rugged pins of fast chains. being moved by push bar method due to higher speed of fast chains the jute reeds emerging from the slow chain are teased out and combed fast chain track star pinion to drive bar slow chain drive left and right hand bars after such teasing and combing an oil in water emulsion is sprayed on the opened fiber mass finally a compressed roll of 100 to 120 kg of jute fiber mass is formed by a pneumatic pressure mechanism and the desired roll size is formed by an action of a micro switch The spreader rolls are seen doffed manually. It can be automatic. The spreader rolls are then placed under a jute cloth for piling for about 24 to 48 hours. wrong cover 
right cover. It is required to place in front of the pile a board mentioning quality, date of piling, date of opening of the pile, etc. Do's and Don'ts in Spreader Wrong feeding. Right feeding. Wrong emulsion application. Right emulsion application. Wrong roll formation. Right roll formation. Clogging and cleaning of conductor. Clogging. Cleaning. Lubrication in spreader machine. Centralized lubrication. Now, we are observing a softener machine. It consists of 16 to 24 pairs of spirally fluted rollers along with one pair each of straight fluted rollers at both ends of the machine. There are one long feed table with a guard to prevent lapping at arbor. And a delivery table. The spirally fluted rollers are placed left hand and right hand ways in order to make the jute strands move in a zigzag way for better softening. During the zigzag movements, the impurities like dirt, dust, sticks, loose leaves, etc. fall under the machine. The roller pressure is exerted by spring housing. The drive is transmitted by bevel wheels.
which have covers with micro switch. At one third position from feed side, an emulsion tray is situated. Emulsion comes in the tray from overhead storage tank and falls on the passing jute across its width by drip feed method. It has a safety guard at the feed side which activates either mechanically or electrically. Machine can be stopped either by feeder or receiver. But cannot be started without consent of both. Now we see the feeding and receiving of long jute in the softener machine. During feeding, the feeder should ensure that A. The quality marks are checked B. Mora must be free from entanglement C. Crop end should be fed first and the root end is sprayed across the width for better application and penetration of emulsion D. Too much overlapping should be avoided for two consecutive moras. E. Emulsion flow should be proper. Any clogging is to be cleaned. F. The jam should be attended by both feeder and receiver immediately after closing the emulsion flow. The receiver should receive the mora and half twist it with root end length longer than the crop end length. Here the receiver's action is seen not correct. The receiver's action is seen correct here. The receiver is now placing the mora on a cart or barrel. We are now observing a carting softener. Here, root cartings are being fed on the feed table. The cartings are treated with emulsion by drip feed method. A receiver is receiving the cartings and placing on a cart. Normally, waste emulsion is applied here. It is piled for 5 to 8 days. Let us now see the process of long jute piling. The basic objectives of piling of jute fibers are A. To soften the jute fibers through microbial action. B. To moist the jute fibers with application of water and also to retain that moisture within the fiber as far as possible up to the spinning stage. Jute fiber after application of emulsion and processed through softener or spreader is subjected to a process called piling. Jute mora from softener is piled for a period of 12 hours to 48 hours depending on the fiber quality. Here we are observing the piling of mora in two rows with root portion of both moras are at the center. After three layers, 2% emulsion is being sprayed 
on the hard root portion. This hand spraying is gradually increased to 4% in the subsequent layers. Pile height has attained around 6 feet and it has been covered with a jute cloth fully. Overpiling will cause damage to the fiber, but underpiling will cause improper distribution of moisture and oil into the fiber mass which will create problem during processing. Pile temperature around 42 degrees centigrade should be attained prior to opening up the pile. Temperature can be ascertained by hand filling. The covered pile must have pile board mentioning pile number, quality, date and shift of piling and pile opening etc. The sorter is filling the pile temperature by hand. The pile cover is seen being removed. The pile is being opened and the jute is being taken to the knife line for hand feeding to breaker card. The preparation of oil in water emulsion for making oil in water emulsion for jute, three components are necessary, namely jute batching oil or JBO, water and an emulsifier, usually P40. We are observing the preparation of oil in water emulsion in a jute mill. About one third capacity of the preparation tank is to be filled with water and required amount of P40. The required amount of JBO is slowly added with continued stirring or pumping circulation or both to get a good emulsion. If required, the stirring may be continued to make the emulsion milky white. If required, the stirring may be continued to make the emulsion milky white. Since JBO is a mineral or a hydrocarbon based oil, for manufacturing the hydrocarbon free jute bags, a vegetable oil as alternative is used. The vegetable oil being used in Indian jute mills is the rice bran oil or RBO. From the emulsion tank, the emulsion is distributed to different spreader or softener machines through a distribution arrangement for the purpose using a pump and a storage tank with slow stirring. Let us now understand 
the basic principle followed to prepare a stable emulsion. Oil is added to water. These two